In this video, we shall show that the Eastern Orthodox novel interpretation of eternal manifestation was not even taught by the earliest opponents of the Filioque. This shows that Gregory II of Cyprus innovated the doctrine of eternal manifestation. This is a clip from my previous video debunking eternal manifestation. The earliest opponents of the Filioque did not appeal to the doctrine of eternal manifestation when combating pro-Filioque arguments. In fact, some, like Photius, make assertions that explicitly contradict the doctrine of eternal manifestation. This clearly shows that the Eastern Orthodox conception of eternal manifestation was an innovative interpretation of the Church Fathers made up by Gregory II of Cyprus at the Council of Blackernay to cope with the abundant evidence of the Spirit's hypostatic relation of origin from the Son put forth by Patriarch John Beckus of Constantinople. Example 1. Theodore of Cyrus, 393-458. Theodore of Cyrus was notorious for rejecting the Filioque in his disputes with St. Cyril. St. Cyril, in his ninth anathema against Nestorius, called the spirit the son's own spirit, using the term idios, which refers to a personal characteristic. Theodore objected to this phrase in his counterstatement 9 to St. Cyril's 12 anathemas, and said it could heretically refer to the spirit as being of the son or through the son, both of which Theodore rejects. Now Theodore concedes that there is one orthodox interpretation of saying the spirit is the son's own spirit. He says, We shall confess that the spirit of the son was his own if he spoke of it as of the same nature and proceeding from the father. So the only orthodox interpretation of the spirit being called the spirit of the son that Theodore knew was that this is referring to mere consubstantiality and procession from the father alone. Notice how he does not explain the spirit being called the spirit of the son by using the doctrine of eternal manifestation or energetic procession. This would be the go-to argument for any modern day Eastern Orthodox interlocutor. Any contemporary Orthodox apologist would claim the spirit is called the spirit of the son because he is manifested by the son, receives energies from the son, or proceeds energetically from the son. However, this line of thought is completely unknown to Theodore because this innovative doctrine was not yet produced by the 5th century. Example 2, Photius, 810-893. Photius was the most popular opponent to the Filioque. In his Mystagogy of the Holy Spirit, the most infamous work disputing the Filioque in all of history up into his time, the doctrine of eternal manifestation is mentioned exactly zero times. In fact, when exegeting John 16, Photius claims there is no way the Spirit can be said to receive from the Son. In Mystagogy of the Holy Spirit 21, he says, the Savior did not say, He will receive from me, but He will receive from that which is mine. For He saw and taught the truth to all, in great harmony and unassailable consistency with Himself. He will receive from that which is mine. There is great and profound difference between the words, from that which is mine and from me. The expression from me indicates the same person who said the words. But doubtless another person is meant, that he who says the words, from that which is mine. What other persons, from whom the Spirit is said to receive, could be meant other than the Father, because it cannot be, as has been recently contended against God, that he receives from the Son, and it certainly cannot be from the Spirit, whom himself does the receiving. Notice that this directly contradicts the modern-day Orthodox pneumatology, as many would explain the Spirit receiving from the Son in John 16 by appealing to energetic procession. However, Photius does not bring this explanation up. Rather, he universally rejects any statement of the Spirit receiving from the Son showing this infamous opponent of the Filioque explicitly contradicts modern-day Eastern Orthodox doctrine of energetic procession. This shows that by the late 9th century, energetic procession and eternal manifestation were completely unknown to the champion of anti-Filioque apologetics, once again indicating this is an innovative concept fabricated by Gregory II of Cyprus. Example 3. Anastasius the Librarian, 810-878. Anastasius the Librarian rejected the Son as cause of the Spirit, using the letter to Rhinus, allegedly authored by St. Maximus Confessor. According to Dr. Ed Sachensky, Anastasius the Librarian interpreted the procession of the Spirit through the Son only in reference to the mission of the Spirit. If this referred only to temporal procession, Anastasius' reading of the letter to Marinus would certainly have been amenable to Photius and his followers. If Anastasius was aware of another interpretation of St. Maximus' use of proenai, i.e. the eternal flowing forth or mission of the Spirit, he does not indicate so here. So here we have another opponent of the hypostatic filioque that did not know of energetic procession nor eternal manifestation and only knew of hypostatic and temporal processions. Example 4, the Council of Blackernay in 1285. When Gregory II of Cyprus presented his Thomas at the Council of Blackernay, which taught eternal manifestation, he received much backlash from his fellow Byzantines. Many accused him of admitting the same theology as Patriarch John Beckos, showing that they were unaware of this novel eternal manifestation doctrine and took it to be identical to the hypostatic filioque and hypostatic procession per filium. Other more conservative Byzantines rejected the Tomos 
and asserted that the only relationship between the Son and the Spirit was by temporal procession. What is clear is that the Greek opponents of the Filioque were hearing the Eternal Manifestation Doctrine for the first time when Gregory II of Cyprus presented his Tomos, showing this is a made-up doctrine that was crafted to try to undermine the overwhelming evidence that John Beckles presented for the equivalence between the hypostatic Filioque and Perfilium formulas. Why is it that none of the opponents of the Filioque up until Gregory II of Cyprus never bring up Eternal Manifestation? The only explanation is that it is an innovative doctrine not contained in apostolic tradition. Now you might object and say, well Brian, look, this Greek father says manifestation, therefore you're wrong. Go watch the previous video. We show what eternal manifestation and shining forth actually means in the church fathers. It does not mean the Eastern Orthodox novel interpretation of eternal manifestation. Go watch the previous video. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Whenever you get into a debate with an Eastern Orthodox who brings up eternal manifestation, share them this video. Also, if you're so inclined, you can financially support me. Venmo in the link below. Any amount helps. Thank you very much. Pray the rosary today. God bless.